In this video, I am going to demonstrate how A1C is determined in your blood. Hey, I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes specialist. And in this video, I am going to show you how your A1C is determined. So hopefully, after seeing this video, you will have a better grasp of what this vital blood test evaluating your diabetes, right? Why it is so critical for your health and well-being. The A1C or hemoglobin A1C level has become a really critical for diagnosing and managing diabetes. Now, in the long run, it can provide you with an indication of how effectively your diabetes treatment plan is working. Well, it sounds simple, but I'm going to make it complicated for you or make you a little expert here. But diagnosing diabetes and monitoring the progress of a treatment plan is frequently really accomplished through that A1C test, right? You always say, what's my A1C? What's your A1C? What's their A1C? Well, the result is based on blood glucose levels over a three-month period making an excellent method for patients with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes if you're seeing your doctor every three months or so. So A1C is actually a glycated form of hemoglobin, which is a hemoglobin that has been bonded to glucose in your bloodstream. The most abundant protein in red blood cell is hemoglobin. Okay, that's why we call it hemoglobin A1C. Now, the A1C level is formed as a result of that interaction between the red blood cells and the hemoglobin and the sugar in your bloodstream. Now, the higher the blood glucose levels are, the more glucose binds to the hemoglobin and the higher the amount of A1C in the blood. Simple, right? Well, A1C blood test measures the amount of hemoglobin that has been linked to glucose over time, not just in a day or two. But sometimes patients will say, Oh, my A1C is high because I had a cereal this morning. I'm like, that's not what A1C does, so you better know your stuff, right? Hemoglobin is a protein found in, again, the red blood cells. What it does actually, it transports the oxygen, right? It's not just to tell us how much glucose is in there. But the process of glycation occurs when the glucose levels are so high and the sugar molecules really, you know, bind to your hemoglobin. And once the hemoglobin molecule has been glycated, it will remain in that state. So once that glucose is stuck on it, it stays there, okay? So, and then finally, it stays there until that red blood cell is carried out and broken down. Now, given that a red blood cell has an average lifespan of three to four months, well, then we, we test the A1C every three to four months to determine that status of glucose over the previous three to four months. The results of the A1C test is expressed as a percentage. So most people don't understand what that percentage means, right? So if you have a high percentage, you have a high blood sugar level, right? If your blood percentage is higher than national average, then we call it diabetes. For example, A1C result less than 5.7 is normal, but uh, if you have diabetes, then your score is typically more than 6.5% or above. So the A1C score between 5.7 and 6.4, as you know, indicates that you have pre-diabetes and that puts you at a very high risk for developing type 2 diabetes sooner or later and cardiovascular disease as well. So most people end up having cardiovascular disease before they end up actually having the real diabetes. So you better start working on your lifestyle changes, you know, get some medication going or supplement going to keep that A1C under control. So don't wait until your A1C is 8% to do something, right? So majority of the people with diabetes monitor their blood sugar levels with a finger stick test, right? And, you know, most of them are due to, with these portable glucose meters, or some people use glucose monitoring systems such as like Dexcom or Libre. Now, healthcare practitioners use A1C. It's an easy way to really understand how well patients are managing their diabetes over a two to three month period, but it doesn't really tell them how they're managing on a day by day basis. It is still a critical tool in determining how well patients are managing their diabetes overall, but it doesn't really tell the physician how high or how low the blood sugars are going because it's only giving an average to the doctor. Now, sometimes when you look at your blood work, you will see a percentage, or sometimes they'll actually give you an estimated average glucose level based on that percentage. So you can look at that. Uh, it's available online as well. But in order to compute that estimated glucose, you need to look at the percentage and then convert that into units of the glucose concentration that you're looking for. It could be milligram per deciliter, or it could be millimole per liter, depending on where you are in the world, right? But every country uses a different measurement. Uh, for example, A1C of 7%, 
is on average 154 in milligram per deciliter or 8.6 millimole per liter. On the other hand, A1C is 9%, for example, it is 197 milligram per deciliter or 11 millimole per liter. So knowing your estimated glucose based on the A1C would really help you understand what your blood glucose really are at uh, instead of getting stuck with the percentages which may not mean anything to you. But when you know that your A1C 7% is equal to 150 milligram per deciliter, that gives more sense, right? Now, as you know, diabetic problems are more likely to occur if your hemoglobin is higher than normal. And for that reason, really controlling your A1C level is very crucial without having severely high or severely low blood sugars. Again, for most diabetics, A1C below 7 is the goal, but when creating goals, it is also really necessary to take into consideration uh, of certain factors such as the person's age, the other health concerns, and, and so forth. As a general rule, for example, the younger the people who do not frequently experience extreme low glucose, etc., such as low glucose or super high glucose, we actually put the goal much lower, like 6.5 or 6%. And that way, you know, they will not have to suffer consequences of complications. But if you're older and if you're experiencing a lot of low blood sugars because of the aggressive treatment and so forth, then we target a little bit higher because, you know, if you get diabetes at 60, 65, you know, diabetes won't kill you within the next uh, 15, 20 years compared to if you had it in your early 40s, then you will be exposed to high blood sugars and diabetes for a longer period of time. So the older you are, more lenient we are with your A1C. So, you know, some 80, 85 year old patients that I tell them, you know, your A1C 8% is okay. They're like, what do you mean by, I heard that it's 7% is okay. Well, for you, 8% is okay because you don't have any complications. Medications are giving you side effects and you don't want to have too many low blood sugars because you're old and frail, etc. There's no point of pushing too hard. And they sometimes don't get it, sometimes they do. But here's what I'm telling you, you know, that is what we are practicing on a day-to-day -day practice. And then your doctor will determine the best A1C for you. Now, it's crucial to remember that the accuracy of A1C tests can be affected by a lot of things too. So if you want to learn more about it, and I know you do, and you know, listen up, but as a token of appreciation, please hit that subscribe button for me and smash that bell icon so you never miss any of our valuable videos that is published three times a week. So back to the topic. A1C levels in people with blood diseases such as like sickle cell disease or thalassemia or hemolytic anemia, for example, they may be lower than the anticipated due to the shorter lifespan of red blood cells, they die earlier and then, you know, circulation is higher so they don't really accumulate too much glucose. Now, A1C values that are artificially high could be due to like iron deficiency anemia because if there's no iron, then you are not going to have enough red blood cells produced and they're going to hold on to more glucose, more older cells and that's going to cause artificially high A1C levels, for example. But the moment you start taking iron, then, then the process speeds up, you start making a bunch of young cells, then also it may make your uh, A1C artificially low. So you have to think all these factors. Acute or chronic diseases can have an impact on the A1C levels as well. So in order to make sure that, you know, any circumstances that may be affecting your, you know, A1C, tell your doctor about what's going on with your health. If you're having blood transfusions, for example, your A1C will be a totally different thing, right? Because we're relying on the red blood cells. So your doctor may come and say, oh, look, your A1C is 4%. How'd you do that? Then don't tell your doctor that, oh, you know, I was doing, I was being such a great boy or such a great uh, girl. Tell them that you got a blood transfusion if that's the case, you know, that that can affect the results. So. Again, like anything that can affect your blood in one way or the other can affect your A1C results. For example, people of African descent or Mediterranean or Southeastern Asian, for example, they may have a type of hemoglobin that they may not even know that can cause falsely high or falsely low hemoglobin levels. Again, like certain kidney and liver diseases, for example, that impair that turnover rate of the red blood cells, again, result in incorrect A1C measurements. Not just transfusion, but even blood loss uh, can have an impact on the outcome of the test. So in spite of all that, A1C test is still believed to be a valid indication of long-term glucose management in most diabetic patients. Like I said, if you have any concerns about your test results, you should discuss that with your doctor and let them consider that A1C with a grain of salt. So thanks for watching. I hope this really helped you understand more about that very important test in diabetes care. Please like, share, and comment on this topic. And remember, most importantly, stay happy, stay healthy.
until the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.